Yo, what's going on guys? This video is going to be made to give you a basic understanding of damage calculation. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to min-max your damage correctly for the best results every single time. So stick with us all the way through because all this has a point and all this is gonna give you a better understanding of the game and how to min-max your builds, how to get the most damage possible basically. Now, I do wanna say this is gonna be part of a series of math calculations for each Vault Hunter. Like I said, this first one is gonna be a general video just to give you a basic understanding um, of how damage is calculated in this game. Um, now, I do wanna say real quick, this video has had a lot of help from everybody who contributed to the Vault Hunter formula document. And a special shout out to Prismatic who sat in a Discord call with me he helped me make sure this video was correct, and he's also worked on tons of other math for this game um, that has led to everything we know. By the way, I will have all of the resources in the description below that is connected to this video, and I'm gonna be updating with future videos. We're gonna cover every single Vault Hunter's skill trees, anointments, and damage formulas. So let's get into it. First, we gotta give you guys a disclaimer. Welcome. Welcome to Whose Line Is It Anyway, the show where everything's made up and the points don't matter. That's right. The points are just like how wrong your girlfriend is when you're having a fight with her. This is Borderlands math. All of these rules are only 50% correct. Just kidding. But there are weird exceptions that will fall outside of these general guidelines. You guys should already know that not everything is worded correctly in this game. Um, even just a great example, we get extra ricochets from adding bonus elements to our weapons. This game can get crazy. However, you should know that usually these are exceptions to the rule and they are not the rule themselves. So this video is not going to include or talk about all these exceptions in detail, but we are letting you know that they do exist. So the point is, this is going to be a general guideline. And just so you know, there are some exceptions that you can ask about later. So with all that being said, the first thing that we need to talk about is additive versus multiplicative damage bonuses. These two terms are not very accurate when most people use them, and you shouldn't just say some sort of damage is additive or multiplicative. When explaining a specific damage bonus to someone, like splash damage for example, splash damage has its own spot in the formula, meaning it's multiplicative, right? Not exactly because splash damage is additive with all other splash bonuses and AOE. However, it is multiplicative with gun damage, for example. Basically, every category I'm gonna break down in this video is additive with all the same type of damages that fall into those same categories, and then those categories are multiplicative with each other. So instead of just calling something additive or multiplicative, you should just inform people what category each damage type falls into, or at least make sure you are saying what it is additive with or what it is multiplicative with. Use it when relating to something else. So with that out of the way, let's break down the basic formula. We've got damage. That equals your card damage times your gun damage bonuses times special multipliers like V1 and V2. Now we're gonna be discussing these special multipliers in later videos. Anyways, that is then multiplied by splash times elemental boosts, then times your crit damage, and finally multiplied again by our miscellaneous, and this is kind of our disclaimer tag. We are also gonna be talking about this miscellaneous tab later in future videos when we break down the math a little bit more. There are certain anointments like sliding and airborne anointments, for example. Um, these have their own spot in the formula, or there are debuffs like piss grenades or eruptions. Those are in their own slot as well. I just wanted to make you guys aware that there are more multipliers, but this video is for understanding basic damage calculation. So for now, let's get rid of the weird ones. And finally, we are left with damage equals the card damage times your gun damage boosts times splash times elemental boosts multiplied by your crit damage. So when it comes to the card damage, the number you see at the top of the weapon card is the final number. 
I know that this Maggie says minus a large percentage chunk of weapon damage at the bottom, but this is already calculated into the card damage. So that number at the top is the final card damage number you have to worry about. And it's that simple, it's perfect. Next, we have our gun damage boosts. Generally, now there are actually a couple of exceptions to this, but anything that says weapon damage or anything that says gun damage, those are the two keywords you are looking for. Those will go into this category. So class mods and anointments use the term weapon damage, while skill trees use the term gun damage. All of these fall into this category and are added into your bonus gun damage. Next, we can already move on to splash. This category is very simple and easy. This is simply anything that says splash or anything that says AOE or area of effect. Those are the key terms you're looking for there, and that's what's added together to make the splash damage bonuses. Nice and simple. Now, let's get into elemental. This is where stuff starts to get weird. There are a couple different things we should mention here. First, let's bring up elemental typing. That's pretty much this chart of when you shoot fire versus shield, or versus armor, or versus flesh, and so on. This is its own thing, and this is basically calculated when your bullet hits the enemy. So this is not in our equation at all. However, you should take this into account. Now, the second thing we should mention when it comes to elemental damage is there are two different kinds. There are elemental boosts, and then there are bonus elements. And these two things are completely different. Elemental boosts is what we are talking about in our total damage equation. These are skills like Moe's has Stoke the Embers, Amara has Tempest, another good example is the Elemental Projector, or you could have a stat roll such as plus 16% shock damage on your artifact. These will boost the damage of that element type only if you are already using that element. So these don't add that element, but instead, when you're already using that element, you get more bonus damage added onto there. So the keywords you are looking for for elemental boosts are increase X element or plus percentage elemental damage. So like I said, um, these are the boosts we are talking about in the damage formula. Um, so these are the ones in the main formula at the top of the screen. And yeah. Now the second thing we have to mention when we are talking about elemental damages are bonus elements. These are pretty complex, they create some weird interactions in the game like the bonus ricochets, but we are not getting into these weird interactions. However, the key word for this is bonus element. These are usually the bonus elemental anointments, or these are skills like cold bore, forceful expression, and so on. These are different from elemental boosts or increases. The way a bonus element is calculated into your damage is it will basically redo the original formula completely as if it was its own bullet or as if it was an extra pellet onto your gun. And then it'll be added to the final damage, but also keep in mind they do not get splash. So a quick example to kind of explain this and answer a question before you guys ask it. Let's say we have a radiation weapon with 100% bonus cryo damage while Sentinel is active. And let's say we have an artifact with plus 16% increased radiation damage. Since the bonus cryo damage calculation completely recreates our damage formula, it's not linked to the original damage, meaning it will not inherently get that bonus radiation damage in any way. So if we're shooting at a neutral flush target, you will see higher damage from the radiation because it gets that bonus from your artifact. So keep that in mind, that a bonus element does not get all the damage boosts from the original bullet. It completely is remade and is its own thing. Now, when it comes to crit, there are two different kinds of crit damage. Weapon crit and bonus crit. Weapon crit will include a couple things. Um, first is the literal stated crit in the tooltip on your weapon card. And then there are some secret bonuses to crit damage. Sniper rifles have a secret 20% crit. Jacob weapons get a secret 10% crit. And Hyperion weapons get a secret 5% crit. These are the values of the secret bonuses currently. Keep in mind, we have had math change with certain patches. 
um, and changes. And there are people who test this stuff all the time. So if there are changes, we will update um, the description, the pin comment, and all of the resources and the documents. All of this will be updated if we ever find anything changing. But these are the current values as of today. Now, each of these bonuses are completely multiplicative with each other, and they're multiplicative with your bonus crit. Now, what's, what's great is, and what makes this super easy to understand, is you can't control any of these um, weapon crit bonuses. This basically just all has to do with whatever weapon you're literally holding, so you don't really have to worry about this, but if you're calculating your damage, you should, be, you should know that they are there. Now we can talk about bonus crit. So what bonus crit is, is any critical damage that you basically have control over. So this is bonuses for, for your class mod, bonuses on anointments, skills that give you critical hit damage, and any guardian rank that gives you crit damage. All of these are additive. They're all added together with each other. And then they're multiplied by the weapon crit that we mentioned earlier, which you can't control. So it's really simple to understand because the weapon crit has to do with the gun that you are holding. That's all multiplicative. And then the bonus crit, all of the critical damage you can add yourself is just additive. And then finally multiplied by the other crit bonuses and then the rest of the equation. Finally, we've explained every single category in the basic damage calculation formula. Now, like I said, this video was made to basically give you an understanding of damage calculation. So that way you can dive into these documents or we can make future videos diving deeper into these subjects as well. However, this is basically how it works in Borderlands 3. There is a category which certain things fall into. Anything that goes into a category is additive with other things inside that category. And then each category is multiplicative with each other. Now, let's hop into the game and show you guys a live test that will show you how to balance your damage for the best results in the end. This is a test directly from Prismatic over on the Gearbox forums, the one who helped me make this video. If you've read his math without numbers thread, then this test will look very familiar to you. So this perfectly brings back up our first point in the video we made today, additive versus multiplicative damage and our very first example, splash damage versus gun damage. We're gonna be shooting an ion cannon, and we're gonna be comparing these two class mods. For the Blastmaster, we're gonna wait the full minute and let the bonuses build up to 100%. And for the Bloodletter, we're gonna reduce our health to one HP with a front loader and thin red line. Otherwise, we're not spending any more skill points in the skill tree, and we're disabling guardian rank. So let's do this real simple. Which class mod do you guys think will do more damage in our first test? Let's go ahead and shoot the Blastmaster. 263,000 damage. Now on to the Bloodletter. 236,000 damage. So congrats to you guys who chose the Blastmaster. You didn't doubt yourself. The bonus we got from it gave us more damage in the end. Now let's do a second test. What happens when we activate our 125% splash damage anointment and we do this test again? Which class mod do you guys think is going to win this time? First, the Blastmaster again. 428,000 damage. Now, let's go to the Bloodletter for a second time with the Anointment activated. 100%. All of a sudden, 466,000 damage, and the Bloodletter wins the second test. How come the Bloodletter wins all of a sudden once we activate our Splash Anointment? And this is where the damage calculations come in. So, all we have affecting our damage is gun damage and splash damage, because I showed you guys we had no skill points and no guardian rank. But let's compare the amount of gun damage and splash damage from our first test to our second test. So in our first test, we had 25% weapon damage and 100% splash damage from the Blastmaster. And from our Bloodletter, we had 75% gun damage and we had 28% splash damage. And that's why the Blastmaster wins the first test, because overall it just does more damage 
with bigger numbers, as you can see from here. But when we activate our anointments, now our numbers start to look a little bit different. We still only have 25% gun damage, but we go all the way up to 225% splash damage for the Blastmaster. And on our blood letter, we still have that, that larger 75% gun damage, but now our splash damage went all the way up from 28% to 153% total. So the Blastmaster still gives us a huge number on one end, but look how lopsided this damage is. The two medium-sized buffs end up giving us a bigger number instead of having one huge number and one small number. So the moral of the story is, if you're debating between two buffs of approximately the same size, then you're gonna wanna give the buff to the category that you have the least amount of damage synced into. Basically meaning when we went to apply our 125% splash anointment to our class mods earlier, it had a much greater effect on the blood letter because the blood letter wasn't giving us a lot of sp splash damage to begin with. And that's why the blood letter wins here. So you can't just say splash damage is multiplicative because we clearly show in the Blastmaster's case, we acknowledge that this splash is still additive with the other splash damages. Now that is it guys, that is a very simple test along with our very simple damage calculation guide inside of this video. Remember, this is basically just a beginner's guide to understanding how damage works and also how to maximize your damage in the end. So that's it for this tutorial on damage basics in Borderlands 3. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below or you can join my Discord channel in the pinned comment. You can also go to the description of this video and check out any of those resources from the Gearbox forums. We have a calculator bot in my Discord where multiple people are ready to answer in-depth questions for you guys. Or you can even check the official Borderlands build section. There are tons of resources for in-depth questions and damage calculations and stuff like that. Like I said, there are more variables we have not discussed in this video. There are more multipliers that go into damage calculation, and there are exceptions which sometimes make no sense and drive some of the math wizards crazy. So with that, I hope you guys learned something today from this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.